All right, Chris Clark here with GamecockCentral.com, and I uh, got a special guest today here on the uh, YouTube channel for Gamecock Central. We'll be joined by former student athlete Terrence Campbell, played at South Carolina for six years. Is that right, Terrence? Yeah, yeah. six years in at South Carolina. Yeah. And um, we're going to look back a little bit on Terrence's career, but also um, he's got a really unique perspective that we wanted to share with everybody today, um, just with everything that's been going on on in the country you know Terrence is a former student athlete we've seen a lot of student athletes speaking out lately and he's also a police officer currently so uh just has a unique perspective on everything and wanted to bring that to everyone so first of all Terrence um how are you been doing man just from a personal perspective um are you staying safe how's everything going in, in your life right now man things in my life are going real good you know I'm real real thankful real blessed staying safe you know what I'm saying just stand out stand out of the way just trying to you know, spread spread more positivity in times yeah. like this as for right now. But before all of this happened, you know, it's, everything's been going good. You know, um, started a new career and just, you know, I was fortunate to play a couple more years of football after I left college. So, you know, it's been, it's been a blessing. Now let's go. So I want to start there actually with your football career and then we're going to get into what you've got going on right now. I'm actually going to share my screen and hopefully you can, uh, you can uh, check this out real quick. I want to go back to – can you see this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Rivals.com profile from the 2006 <laughs> class. Um, what do you remember about the recruiting process? You know, it's obviously a lot different nowadays, but what do you remember yeah. about that? I remember just competition. I remember, you know, going different schools and, you know, realizing that, hey, it's a, it's a lot of good guys out here. Mm -hmm. you know, it's bigger than just, you know, right here in – in Georgia where I'm from and just just the whole process it was it was fun you know it was fun you know going to those different schools and visiting different campuses and having coaches come out to to my high school and my home potentially and basically you know give me an opportunity to change my life forever like it was it was a it was a it was a good time yeah yeah so you were listed as a defensive lineman is that where most schools recruited you for yeah, yeah, everybody recruited me for D-line. I, I never thought I'd be playing O-line. I didn't, I didn't want to play O-line at all. <laughs> right. Um, why did you pick South Carolina back then? Oh, man, it was, you know, Coach Spray had just got there. You know, the old ball coach and him, his reputation at Florida was, you know, speaks for itself. And then, you know, one of my best friends was there, you know, with Kenny McKinley. You know, he was up there just – you know, he went up there just a year before me, and we went to high school together. You know, that was – you know, we grew up together, so – it would just it just seemed like it was you know perfect match. Yeah, you know, I had I had a real good time there. I had a real good time there. Where, where would you have gone if you didn't pick South Carolina? You think Louisville, <clears throat> Louisville. I love Louisville. Louisville was a lot of fun. Louisville was nice. The environment, the atmosphere up there was good. You know, they had they had a good coaching staff at the time with um I want to say Bettino. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Bobby was there. there. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So um, it was good. So when you got to South Carolina, how did you end up moving to the O line? Because you mentioned earlier you never planned on moving there. You know, to never. The <clears throat> so I came in D line and I was doing good. I was having a great, great, you know, beginning of my freshman year. You know, me and Norwood, we was the boys. You know, we came out of Cobb County together. That was my 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 guy right there. So you know, we came in looking wanting to play. He played defensive end too. So we both was trying to get on the field. Uh, unfortunately, I got hurt. Um, that summer before the season started, like right before, like probably like a week before the Mississippi State game, um, I got hurt. Um, and then after that, you know, I got, you know, I was very, man, I had, it was so crazy. I got so fortunate, you know, that I was able to drop out of school because I could not, you know, manage it. I can't manage being hurt and go to class. Like I just couldn't manage it. You know, I was young, I was 18 years old. And, you know, Coach Frey was let me stay on campus, get, bigger, stronger, faster. And during that time I just got huge. <laughs> you know, just, you know, I'm not I'm not running, I'm not doing anything. All I'm doing is eating and working out on a new program. And I got all this free food and stuff. So I just got huge during that time. And, and I was like dead last on a depth chart for D Talc. I moved to D Talc or wasn't doing well at that. And then one day Coach Spreads was like, hey, we gonna, you know, think you play off the line. You're a fighter. You know, you you you'll fight. So he was like, we'll put your office in line and just see how it goes. And yeah. You know, that was and Coach Sayer started working with me. He was a former Gamecock, and he was on the staff at the time, and he started just spending days after days with me after practice, you know, um, 
trained me to be an offensive lineman. Yeah, and it worked out well for you. I mean, you end up starting for some good teams. Yes, it did. It worked out really good for me. You know, I, I, I thank Coach Brad for that. At the time, I was so mad. You know, I wish I would have listened a lot earlier and really took, took it more seriously a lot earlier when he was telling me. But it's still, and Coach said was telling me, you know, they was all telling me what an opportunity could be. And it, and it did turn out to be good. I still want to go go play play some more years. And, you know, it took me all over the world. You know what I mean? So it actually worked out. Yeah, so you um, – your last year was what, 2012 or 2011 was your last year, yeah. right? Yeah. So you had a chance to be a part on, of the, the only SEC East winning team. Yeah, yeah. The next year's team, uh, you know, won 11 games, went 11 and 2. Uh, what what was the experience like from building to that 2006 to where the team was, you know, doing some good things but not upper echelon and then moving to that, that sort of championship type level? Man, it was awesome. It was an amazing atmosphere. It was so much fun. It was from just remembering how, how it all started when Coach Perry first got there. And, you know, basically we would first got there when Coach Perry did. And, you know, just remember the whole fan base. The fan base was always strong, though. The fan base was always great. But just when we started winning, it just turned up all the way to another level. And, and you know, just the – you know, we started getting better things. You know, when you when it when it makes every everybody happy, it makes the city more money, it makes the school more money. So everybody benefits from winning. You know what I mean? Everybody does. So it was just it was it was a lot better. And you know, the and, and the only thing that really changed was just the commitment of level of the guys. You know what I mean? The commitment level of the guys in the locker room and all of us wanting to win, all of us having to, you know, just come together to do it. You know, it wasn't the coaching staff necessarily that, you know, made it, it was really the summer time with the guys it was all of us being like hey this is what we really want we we want to be good and we're gonna go in here and do this extra work and we're gonna when we go to work out we're gonna work out hard we're not gonna skip any reps so those those were the things that I remember that changed the most yeah. you know about the program when we started winning and you mentioned earlier you got a chance to go play some ball uh after South Carolina tell us about that experience a little bit man that was cool you know I was fortunate enough where I got I went undrafted to the Redskins, didn't stay there that long. I ended up going to the Giants, didn't stay there that long. I ended up going to the Jets. I was there for a little bit. And it was still a great experience. After I left from there, I got to go do arena, and I really killed the arena. I got to go play arena in, in to Orlando, Vegas, you no know, San Jose. So it was just – that was a lot of fun. Then I got to go to Canada. Then I got to go to Canada. I did Canada, and I did it. You know, out there I did it with, you know, the Hamilton Tight Cats and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. You know, that was all – that was amazing. Those were good times. And, you know, I, throughout that whole process, you know, you know, it was fun. It was fun. I, I really felt like that was – that was you know, I wanted to always get back to the NFL. Of course, anybody want to play in the NFL for as long as possible. But the whole process of my journey, I think it was all built up to, you know, what I'm doing now. You know, I think it was all part of the, the plan. And, you know, just, you know, what guy, guy had – had I already knew I would do that I never thought I would do, but he he already had it planned out. So I think that's what I think was all part of, you know, getting to see different areas and meet different people and just expand my knowledge on, you know, what goes on in the world and, and even up in Canada. You know, I even got to do some coaching in Germany. You know, football, I got to allow me to do some coaching in Germany and do some football camps in Germany. Like, I mean, I can't, you know, football, coming to South Carolina was, you know, probably one of the best things of my life and, 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 and transitioning to – become an offensive lineman, I really think, you know, it was just all part of the plan. Yeah. So uh, that's what I want to get into next. You know, you mentioned doing something you never thought you'd do. When we talked the other day to uh, – when you so graciously agreed to, to talk with me, you know, you mentioned, hey, I never thought I'd be a police officer. So, <laughs> number one, um, tell me how you ended up as a police officer. And number two, why did you never think you'd be a, a police officer? Was it just because you thought you'd be a football player? Did you have something else in mind? Just go into all that, if you will. Um, well, the, the way I found the job was, you know, it was just, you know, it was, it was crazy. I just literally, I, I, when I retired from football in 2017, we had opened the gym up. You know, the gym didn't go so well. You know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't doing as good as we had hoped it would do. And so I started looking at other options and stuff like that. And I just, honestly, I never worked before in my life, but I never had a job in my life. So I typed in on Indeed, like, entry-level, six-figure paying jobs. You know, that's why I typed in. <laughs> that's why I typed in on Indeed, and you know, a bunch of cops, a bunch of police jobs popped up in California, and and like some truck driving, and some other little sports management type jobs and things like that, which all were required training. 
you know, but I was just like, you know, what would, you know, when I saw those options, I was like, you know, what would it give me? You know, I like being a role model. I enjoy being able to give back. I enjoy, you know, being able to give to the community, you know, and that's what all football was about. And then as I got into, I thought about that as an officer and I thought about, you know, everything that was going on that, you know, it'd be good to, for me to do something like that. So, and I, and I, and I, I applied, I sent my resume to them out. You know, and then, and then some of them sent, sent me back with like, oh, you're advanced to the next level. You know, as I started telling my friends about it and stuff like that, everybody was like, well, you, you ain't no cop. Why don't you go do coaching? You know, why don't you go get into something like that? And I'm just like, bro, I'm like, right. You know, I'm like, y'all right. Like, I ain't no cop. Like, you know, I shouldn't do this, you know. So I kind of backed out. I didn't proceed with the process anymore. And then a, somebody, a recruiter from San Jose called my phone. And like, when he called me, you know, we talked on the phone and stuff like that. And, you know, he kind of, you know, talked to me and gave me a little breakdown of, you know, what's going on and just really, you know, hollered at me and talked to me. I was like, dang, I was like, dang, I was like, you, you seem cool. And he was like, man, we're coming to Atlanta. You know, we're coming to Atlanta at the end of May. Like, just come out and talk to us, you know. So eventually they came to Atlanta and then I went out and talked to him. And it was four brothers, you know what I mean? It was four, you know, it was like, what's the chance of some police officers from San Jose being four black guys, you know what I mean? And one guy just came from Atlanta PD. And they just were able to talk to me and the things they were telling me and it's how cool they presented it to me, it was kind of like, okay, like, you know, like, let me, I can try it out. You know, I can see what it's all about. And that's kind of what, you know, what started my process with, uh, you know, with the going going forward. And it was helpful throughout the whole time, man. Like, I really, I, I tell them guys, thank, I talked to one of them early this morning. I was like, man, thank you, man. I, I, you know, I would have never even done this if, if you didn't, you know, get, talk to me and, you know, spread that knowledge to me. So that's what I feel like I'm just trying to, you know, I, essentially that's what I want to do. I want to spread the knowledge to other people, you know, of, of color. And even if you're not of color, just other people who don't even like the police that just need to come and join it to have good character. Because it's not even about color, honestly. It's all about the character of a person when you're doing a job like this. That's what it comes down to, essentially. So that's what, and the reason I never thought that I'll be a police officer, I never thought I'd be a police officer just because, you know, we never talked about anything like that. You know, I was, I didn't grow up like, hey, I want to be a police officer. Hey, I want to be a firefighter. I grew up shooting the basketball in the trash can saying like, hey, if I make this, I'm going to go to the NFL, you know, and, and if I miss it, I'm going to shoot it again until I, until I make it, you know, that, that's how I grew up. I didn't grow up like, you know, meeting firefighters or meeting police officers or, you know, even meeting you know, doctors and stuff like that, judges. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't know not one, you know, growing up, you know, so I knew more people in my neighborhood that was doing things, you know, besides, and we didn't even have the internet or anything like that growing up as well. So, you know, it's not even, like all I knew was my neighborhood, to be honest with you. So I just never, we never talked about being a police. We didn't, we didn't associate with the police. You know, we didn't have anything. We didn't have, we didn't want to do anything with the police. We didn't want the police to come to our neighborhood, you know. We, we, we preferred, you know, there was no police, to be honest right. with you. Did, so. did you have any, aside from just not really associating, you know, did you have any negative experiences? And I don't know if you even want to go into those, but were there any negative experiences that you had or maybe that people that you knew had that maybe, like, gave you a perception of, of the police? Yeah, you know, we had a perception. And, you know, it's always been, you know, you never tell the police anything, you know, and then I had different things happen to me, you know, as, as a young, a young adult, you know, growing up in Georgia, you know, I had different things happen to me, um, dealing with police where, you know, we've been unlawfully searched, especially now that I know the law. It's so funny, you know, now that I know the law and I know like, you know, what an unlawful search is, what, what, you know, your, your right to privacy, you know, what to, you don't have to, is this a stop and identify state? You know, I know these types of things now. So it's like, you know, like, yes, it was a lot of times it was unlawful. You know, a lot of times when we were pulled out of the vehicle, you know, it was for no reason, searched and stuff like that. And then they might have found out that we was an athlete and, 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 it, and it, you know, it went a different way, you know. So I, I can't even say that I had it as, as bad as I know some other my other friends might have had or, or some other people around the country might have had. But simple fact that because I played ball, you know what I mean, I, and, and me playing ball gave me, more of a pedestal, like, oh, yeah, I know you from the TV, more, oh, yeah, I know, compared to if I didn't do any of that, you know, things could have went essentially a different way. So, you know, I, I've been I've been handcuffed and sat on the curb and then let go and essentially a dust off and like, hey, have a, have a good night. Had to park my car somewhere and because I had the spotlight on, on it and I'm not supposed to have, they said I'm not, but I don't know. You know, it just, 
Right. We was young, so you know, you just agree with the police. You know, we, right. we you know, I always agree. My mom always said, "Don't never, don't never argue. Just yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and you know, get out of there as soon as possible." So, so it's it's been an interesting time, and I've seen some of your um, social media posts and some of the pictures you've been putting up. So you have been helping um, with some of the protesting, right? That's been going on over there. Can you tell us a little bit about? you know just the experience of that and maybe some of your general thoughts on just you know what's going on with with a lot of the protests and um some of the outcry against some of the stuff that's been going on in the country well you know i can't really speak on the whole world and everything i, I can specifically speak on like you know what's going on with san jose police yeah. department and i'm not even up high in the chain of command or anything like that like i'm at the very bottom of the po totem pole but it, I, I do know the orders that I've been given and, and the things that's been told to me are things that I've heard, you know, and, and, and it's been, let's keep it peaceful. You know, it's been like the protest is fine. That's, you know, that's not, that's not an issue. You know, it's, that's not a problem at all. It's just about keeping it peaceful, you know, and, and, and you know, it, I told it, I'm all for it. I'm all for it, you know, a hundred percent for it. And, you know, I'm, I believe in it and, and I just want people to know that it, it, it's also, we, we still have to do more, you know, it still has to be more things to be done, you know, like some people were mad that I was on the other side of the fence, you know, and was taking it personal or taking it like, you know, like I'm not with them or I'm not for them, not for the community. I'm, I'm for the community in general. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a, I just a good character, good person. I'm for the community. So it's, it's like, if you don't, you should be happy to see, you know, different races, you know, govern you. You know, that's what it's all about. That's what that's what we need. You sh you don't want it. You don't want it to just be a all, you know, Hispanic staff. You don't want it to be a all white staff. You don't want you want it to be different, mixed up, because that way you can get different perspectives. You can get you can hear them. You can understand that more and more. You know, of course, everybody's not gonna understand you know the black community as good as I understand the black community because I grew up in that. That's where I'm from. Like so, even an officer that's been an officer for 20 years. You know, he's not going to been a police officer for 20 years. He's going to understand the law. He's going to understand how to be a police officer way better than me. But as far as, like, talking to the community and reaching out to the community, he's not going to have a great understanding of, of what's going on there because he didn't grow up in that. He's not from that. So you, we need more people that's, you know, Hispanic, you know, Asian, you know, African-American. We need more just of everything to be involved. You know, instead of just being one sided, you know, and that and that's what I essentially come down to. And I went out and I think athletes are, are great for it. Be great for this. We'll be perfect for this, you know, just because it's it's similar. It's so many like I like I was thinking about it yesterday, you know, when you know I was going to the I was going to a call. I was going to a call. Well, I thought about it afterwards. Afterwards I was sitting down, like I went to a call and you know, a dude had a gun potentially, and he had a gun in his hand. You don't know which way it's going to go. You don't know what's going to happen when you show up to the scene. Like, we, we are, you don't know if it's going to, he's going to pull a gun on you and shoot you. You don't know if, if it's an ambush. You don't know what's going on. You don't know if he's going to be compliant and just go with the program. You don't know. You know, and that's kind of like a football game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Before I get to the football game, before I'm on the bus, you know, on my way to the game, and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen in today's game. Quarterback, he, quarterback, may throw the interception, we may, the D lineman may get hurt, we may, offense line may get, may get hurt. You just don't know what's going to happen in the game. You don't know how it's going to go. But you come to the game with a strategy. Come to the game with a plan. Same thing in police work. We come to the game, we come to the scene with, a, with, with an idea of what we're going to do, of how we think it's going to work out, what we want to accomplish, but you just never know how it's going to go. Then you get there, you execute, you get on the field, you execute the plays. You know, you get out there in the, in the, in the, and in, in, in the force in the field with the police and you execute the play, execute the programming, you know, you try to get it done as calmly, as cool as possible. You try to win the game. You know, and that's, it's so similar, you know, and I got that same feeling. And I get that same feeling that I would get from playing football with doing the police work, you know what I mean? And I, and I really enjoy it. And, you know, I definitely really enjoy it. So one thing you mentioned earlier is how, you know, you've always enjoyed the aspect of being a role model. And so, on an individual level, particularly with everything going on right now, right, where there's so much, there's protesting and um, there's rightfully um, people wanting adjustments to maybe how things are done. Um, how, you know, what can you do or what are you trying to do individually? You know, and then do you have more broad thoughts on, you know, anything from improving 
race relations to, you know, police brutality to the attitudes towards the police, just all those different things lumped together. You, you know, I think it's, I just get out in the community. You know, I just get out in the community. I just stop and say, what's up? I stop and say, I stop, I pass out stickers. You know, I stay, I go have a conversation with, you know, I see people cooking out. I go, hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? I pull up over there and talk to them, have a conversation with them, you know, try to get to know them, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to get to know them like on a personal level, but just so they can know that I'm a normal person. So when they see me, you know, they don't see me riding by mugging them. You know, it's been so many times where I've been a kid, you know, I just remember things when I was a kid and how, would, how, yeah, how it could have impacted me differently if they would have did differently. Instead of you driving by just mugging me and looking at me and, like, giving me a skull face, you know, because we outside hanging out chilling, what if you stopped and, and just said, what's up? Like, you don't know what we're doing over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just stopped and what's going on, you know, see what's happening. How y'all doing at school? Like, y'all over, you know, just make a conversation. It goes a long way. So I think that's what really helps, you know, being able to get out in the community and being able to, to just show face, not not where it's like, not where it's like, oh, you have to do this. It's like, oh, well, you're chilling, you're just chilling doing this. While you're just chilling doing this, you could be going to help somebody. You could be going to make a community community relation. Like me personally, I never like to just sit in one spot as an officer. I like to drive around. You know, I drive around. You never know what I might see or who I might help. You know, anything. You know what I mean? Like, my goal as an officer is to build a community ties up and, and, and make it known, hey, like, like I'm just like you. I'm, I'm, I'm from the same place as you from. You got tattoos all over your body. I got tattoos all over my body. You came from that neighborhood. I came from that neighborhood. Like, you know, I'm, I, I am you. You know what I mean? I'm just essentially trying to get inside of the, of the building so that my voice can essentially be heard more. You know what I mean? I just want to, I want my voice to be heard more. I've, I've, I've come to learn that, you know, it's great to have a voice on the outside. It's great to voice your opinion. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, a lot of times is is what's going to go on behind them closed doors. You know, what's going to happen when the doors are closed? Who's going to be talking? Who's going to be making rules and laws and stuff like that? And I'm just, the city would, would love to be able to have a voice in that, you know, and, and, and people will know that that voice is coming from somebody genuine, somebody who came from those circumstances. Even if you didn't come from those circumstances, you still should seek to learn by just going to talk. Like, you, you, you'll learn so much from just talking to people. Like, I didn't, like, before I went to South Carolina, I didn't know too many, you know, white people. I didn't, it wasn't like I was just, like, super friends with a bunch of white people. So, like, once I got up there and I, and I started to, to, you know, meet white people, it was, it was like, oh, damn, it was super cool. And I had some friends who went to all black college who have a totally different perspective from me. You know, we went to the same high school, but they went to all black college and I went to, you know, University of South Carolina. They perspective was totally different from my, but at the end of the day, you just have to try to reach out and learn about that perspective, you know, yeah. reach out and learn about that, about that community. Cause at, at the end of the day, we're all a human race. It, it really doesn't matter about the skin color. To me, it just comes down to the content of your character. Cause I know some officers that's, that's Asian and they have the same character as me. That's awesome. Some Hispanic officers, some white officers, and they have the same character as me as that, and they are awesome. And I'm sure it could be some people in the department that don't have that type of character. And, and you just have to try to weed that out. You have to try to get more people involved that have the character that's needed to govern all people, yep. you know. So that's, from that's here, right. you know, yeah. my opinion is not all the way right. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, that, that's my, my personal opinion. That's not a reflection of, you know, San Jose Police Department. That's not a reflection of anybody. No, that's Terrence Campbell. Opinion. Yeah, sure. So from here, last couple things for you here and I'll let you run man but um any uh any thoughts on just future for you like do you see yourself staying in law enforcement and you know continuing to maybe move up and making a bigger impact the next I don't know 20 years or do you have any other ideas of things to do ways to make an impact man I love what Mo Brown is doing you know what Mo Brown got going on yeah Mo Brown is killing it right now you know I love that you know and I would I would love to see what's going on with that and Maybe try to get a little involved with that. You know, I don't know. You know, just whatever, whatever path. I would have never, who would, I would have never expected this to be going on. You know what I mean? Like, so if you would ask me 10 years ago, would I be talking at, when I was 22 years old in college? Or they, would I be talking on on Gamecock Central, on Gamecock, to the Gamecock Nation about 
being a police officer and about, you know, what's going on with the injustice system, I would have been like, no way. I would never be doing that. So, you know, I just don't know. I'm just, I kind of let, I'm just trying to let God lead the way. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm super blessed, you know. I love, I love the job that I have. I would love to grow up, go up in the rank. I would love to do a bunch of other things. This, this is a lot of fun, you know. I would love to bring more of my, my more athletes on board with this. Like, that's what I would really love to do. Really would love to get a program together that would, you know, because football is not forever. You know, NFL stands for not for long. You know, that's what it really stands for. So, like, I would love to get, you know, something together where it's like we got guys learning about this. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, you know, guys don't have no no record, no criminal record, good character guys, hardworking guys, play ball their whole life. This is essentially the same thing. It's a playbook. You learn a lot. I learned the laws just like I learned my playbook with flashcards, with, with going up, with rewriting them. Like, it's a lot of similarities. So... That's what, you know, maybe I can do something like that. You know, I don't, I just don't know where, where it's going to go, but I would definitely love, I'm always trying to strive and move up. Like I'm always trying to move forward. Like I'm never, I'm never satisfied with just staying in, in one spot. I always want to try to do more. So. Sure. Well, cool. Well, Terrence, hey, I really appreciate you, man, taking some time to uh, give some thoughts. I'm, I'm glad everything's going so well for you and appreciate, you know, the impact that you're making, you know, um, in the community. And I hope you can continue doing that. I know you will. And I hope that you keep safe out there too, man. Man, I love Game Cock Nation. I just want to, you know, I always appreciate y'all always just showing me a lot of love. And, you know, even doing this, even reaching out to me to do this, man, thank you so much. You sure. know what I'm saying? I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. There's a lot of other more important people you can talk to. So you, I really appreciate <laughs> you just coming to talk to me, you know. So, so definitely right. um, um, have a good day. And, you know, if you got any other questions, man, or something like that, you know, I, you know, I don't mind. All right. Answer. I appreciate you letting me give my voice and my opinion about stuff. Anytime, man. Thanks so much for your thoughts. We'll catch up soon. Hope you hope you stay well. You know it. You too, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.